Hello, my friends. Uh, we're gonna wait just a minute or two before we start. Right now, you are looking at some little artists. These are maggots, and they are going to be one of our paintbrushes today. So if you give us just a minute, and then we'll get started. <clears throat> All right, it is 10.01. Let me get my camera here. We're gonna flip this around, set it up here. So good morning, all of my bug friends. Uh, my name is Jenny and I run the insect zoo at Iowa State University and I'm also an entomologist. So if you have watched my lives before, you already know what an entomologist is, but I'm going to explain it for my friends who are just joining us for the first time. So an entomologist is a scientist who studies bugs, but as an entomologist, we don't only study bugs. We get to study the largest group of animals on earth called arthropods. Now arthropods are animals just like you and I are animals, or a cat, or dog, or dolphin, those are all animals, but we are much different than arthropods. So we have a spine. That's this bone that runs straight down your back. So we have a spine and bones inside our body. Well, arthropods, do they have bones inside their body? No. Arthropods do not have bones inside their body. Their bones are on the outside. It is called an exoskeleton. So an exoskeleton, it is a skeleton, but it's a skeleton on the outside of the body. So arthropods are insects, spiders, tarantulas, millipedes, centipedes, scorpions, shrimp, crabs, and lobsters. So even some of the animals you like to eat, they are very closely related to insects. And guess what? They're all made of the same stuff. So when you're eating shrimp, it is just like eating crickets or cockroaches or flies. They're all made of the same stuff. Now today, my friends, is a very special day because we're going to do some insect art. It's gonna be so fun. So one of the options that if the insect zoo comes and visits you, you can do insect art with us. But of course, right now we all have to practice social distancing, which means we have to stay apart from each other so we can't visit you. So I have some insect art that you can do at home on your own without the insect zoo, with things that you can find in your yard or things uh, in your own house. And we're gonna get started with that. The first thing we're gonna do is build a bug. Now we're gonna build two kinds of bugs, okay? So I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do first. Let me get this turned around here. Okay, so these are all of my supplies for the first build a bug. And this is what, this is the bug that we're gonna build first. You might be thinking, that does not look like a bug. That's because it is camouflaged. So this is a caddis fly. A caddis fly is an insect that lives in the water as a larva, and it builds a case around its body <clears throat> with things that it finds from the environment. So things that is around, that, that are around it. So you can see this caddis fly is very well camouflaged. So we're gonna do that. So here's what I did. I sent my kids outside and I said, fill this bucket with things from our yard. 
And you can see we've got lots of leaves and some sticks and there's some dirt in there. That's very good. And then this one, we have some moss. I love moss. And then we have, I think these are daylilies that were cut from the yard, which is okay. And then look at all these other little things. There's so many little things that you can find in your yard. So go outside and find, well, not right now. Let's finish watching and learn how to make it. And then you can go outside and you can find things to camouflage your caddis fly and i also have a bit of sand here and then i have some glue some q-tips to use the glue and the highly sought after toilet paper roll of course the ones that are highly sought after have toilet paper on them this is an empty toilet paper roll you can also use rolls from um gift wrap or paper towels, just cut it down if they're too big. Okay, and then I'm gonna have a, a clothespin. These are mini clothespins. And I like to use um, pipe cleaners for my body, but if you don't have pipe cleaners, you can use a straw or a popsicle stick. If it's a used popsicle stick, just make sure to wash it with some soap and water. Um, or a plastic spoon. Now, I don't have any big plastic spoons. I just had a little one. But any size is going to work. And then I have some buttons. And these buttons are for my eyes. Um, if you don't have buttons you can, and you have googly eyes, you can use those. Or you don't have to have eyes on your bug. So I'm going to prop my camera up here just like that so you can see what I'm doing okay so we'll leave this right here so you can see what's going on this is what we're gonna make and you can see it says Ryan so one of my students made this during our one of our bug camps last year so first I'm gonna take my uh, pipe cleaner and this is the body of the insect, which is actually inside of the cat, the caddisfly's case. So I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna fold it right in half. And then I need a head. Oh, I forgot to grab a head for him. Here, we're gonna use this color. So I've also got palms. And if you don't have palms, you can use a cotton ball or a piece of fabric or anything that you think would make a good insect head, that's what you can use. So I'm gonna take my buttons, and you can use two different buttons. I like to use two different buttons. And I'm just gonna feed this through just like this. Get it through the other one. So this is an eye. You see how that does, how that works? Okay, now I'm gonna find another button and I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. Whoops, I didn't go far enough in. We want them to be closer together so they can fit on that head. All right, check that out. So now I have two buttons on there and these are my eyes. So then I'm gonna take my palm and I'm gonna put it right in there. Then I'm gonna twist it so it does not fall out. You see that? So now he's got two eyes and a head. Okay, now we're done with this part for now. So I'm gonna leave that set right there. Now we're gonna do our camouflage on our caddis fly. And to do that, I'm gonna take my paper, um, my toilet paper roll and my Q-tip, and I'm gonna put some glue on there. And I like to um, cover mine in some sand first. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna get this up. And I'm using Elmer's glue. It works the best, but you can also use like tacky glue. Um, glue sticks, they work, but um, not as well. For this part, it works fine. Then I'm just gonna dip that down into the sand and roll it 
And then look, look at that, isn't that awesome? Okay, then I also have some um, dirt over here that my son, Ren, he collected some dirt for this. So let me get some of these leaves out of here. Try not to make a giant mess. So we're gonna put some some of the soil on there also. So I'm gonna get some more and I'm gonna rub it on there just like that. You see how I twist the Q-tip while I'm pulling the glue up? That way it doesn't um, drip off all over the place. Then I'm just gonna roll that right in that soil. Let's look at that. Whoa, check that out. Let's put some right here where we missed it. Look at that, that looks fantastic. Okay, now I'm gonna use some of this fabulous moss. I love moss. So we're gonna glue this just like this. How about that? So I think this is gonna take a lot of glue. It's a good thing I have a whole gallon of it, right? <laughs> yes. So I'm just putting the a lot of glue on there. And I'm gonna take the moss and I'm gonna glue it on there. I'm gonna push it down, just like this. Oh, that's fantastic. So this is what my caddisfly case looks like right now. That's great. Okay, but that's not all caddisflies do. They will find little bits of stuff and glue it Whoops, that went right into my glue. That's okay. And glue it to the tops of them. Look at this leaf right here, this little plant. We're gonna do that. We're gonna put that here. And then what else should I put on it? Look at all this awesome stuff in here. It's just great. Ooh, how about some sticks? Should we glue some sticks on there? I think we should. Put some sticks on there. Whoop, look at that. Now, why do caddisflies want to camouflage themselves? Why do you think an animal camouflages itself? That stick came off. There we go. Ooh, how about this leaf? Let me put this leaf on here. Put it right there. So caddisflies camouflage themselves so that they will not be eaten by animals. Because that's what's gonna happen to them if they don't. Insects are very tasty. Ooh, look at these rocks right here. So there are some caddisflies that put rocks all over themselves. They build this little case with rocks. They use all sorts of things. Now you might be asking, but how does the caddis fly get this to stick? They make their own glue. Yes, the caddis flies make their very own glue. Isn't that so cool? Now we have a walnut tree in our yard. So I've got this walnut shell I'm gonna put on here. This caddis fly, if we had a water in our yard, a stream in our yard, this would be very well camouflaged against predators. You are right, it's to protect themselves from predators. My little rock fell off there. Please stay, rock. All right, so now we are going to put our body inside of our caddis fly. But first I wanna just clean this up a little bit. And we're gonna, remember our body that we made? So we've got the head, we've got two eyes, and then this is the body. <clears throat> so the body goes inside the caddis fly case and then we just want his little head just sticking out a little bit. 
And I'm gonna come out here and you see how these pipe cleaners stick out? And I'm gonna just bend them down just like that. Now, if you don't have a pipe cleaner and you are using something like a popsicle stick or a spoon or a straw for your body, then you would have instead glued your head to your popsicle stick and then you would just glue it inside of your toilet paper roll, just like that. Looks like my walnut fell off again. Let's see if I can get that. All right, look, we're done. There is our, <laughs> there is our caddisfly. Isn't he great? So you can make this by going outside and finding things in your own yard to camouflage your caddis fly. And if you make one of these, if you want to take a picture of it and send it to me, then I can post that on our Facebook page and you can show off your amazing caddis fly. That <laughs> walnut shell just does not want to stay. I'm going to let it dry up here and we're going to build another bug. Let me scoot this stuff over the place. This one is very simple. So I'm going to use a clothespin. I've got, I took a pipe cleaner and I cut it into three pieces, all about the same length. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then I have another little pipe cleaner and I have three little palms. Now, what if you don't have these little palms? That's okay. You can use some cotton balls. Just tear the cotton ball in half or cut it in half. And then you can use a marker and you can color that if you want to. So what we're going to do first is we're going to put on the legs. But this is the body of our insect. But insects don't just have one body part like this would be. How many body parts do insects have? They have three body parts, the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. And that's where these palms come in. Now on the head of the insect, which would be here, that's where we can find the eyes and the mouth. And I have some googly eyes here that I'm gonna glue on there. But if you don't have googly eyes, you can use buttons or you can just draw them on with a marker. And then the next part of the body would be the thorax. So that's going to be blue. And then we have the abdomen. So three body parts, head, thorax, abdomen. If you don't want to use this one for your abdomen, you can count this whole part right here as your abdomen. Okay, so if you want to color your uh, clothespin, you can. So I'm going to just color here with a marker. You can also use paint if you want to. Make sure you're asking your parents before you get out paint or markers. Okay, so I'm gonna color this side too. Here we go. And if you don't have a clothespin, you can also use a plastic spoon or a popsicle stick um, or a, a straw, just like we you could have used it for the last one that we did. Okay, now I'm going to put my legs on. And where are the insect legs found? Does anybody know? On the thorax. So that's going to be the middle part of the body. So here's how I'm going to do that. I'm going to open my clothespin. I'm going to put my legs here. Then I'm going to bend it up. And I'm going to give it a little twist. And bring it back down. Those aren't really even. I'm going to do it again. <laughs> It doesn't have to be perfect. You make your bug just how you want to. Let's try it one more time, and then we're just gonna be happy with what we have. Okay, super uneven, doesn't matter. This bug is awesome. Has anybody ever read the book, um, what is that, The Ugly Bug? We have that book at home, and boy is that bug ugly, holy cow. Okay, then I'm going to put my next legs on there. Again, I'm going to open the clothespin. 
I'm gonna put it right in there because how many legs do insects have? Six legs. So we have to make sure that we have six legs and you see how when I fold it over, it makes two legs, one leg on each side. Then again, I'm gonna put my, my um, open my clothespin, put the pipe cleaner in and fold it over. Guess what we have now? We have six legs. Now you can also make a spider. If you were making a spider, how many legs would you have on your spider? You would have eight legs and only two body parts. Okay, so now I've got this empty spot right here. So that's where it comes in a head. So we're going to use this pink for his head. How about that? I'm going to put a bit of glue. It's kind of dirty. So I'm going to get a new uh, Q-tip for that. So we don't get dirt all over our little bug here. So I'm just going to put some glue. You can also use um, glue dots for this. If you have glue dots, these are great for, for this too. There we go. Then I'm just going to glue his head right on there. Just like that. There's our head. Okay, and for the eyes, I am gonna use some glue dots because they stick better um, with the glue dots. And if you've ever used glue dots, they're super cool. You see that little dot right there? I'm just gonna set the eye on there. Oh, let's try it again. Well, they prefer to stick to my finger today, don't they? Let's see if we get one of these ones. Boy, they are not wanting to cooperate. There it comes. Okay, so I said glue dots are easier, but wow, this is not being easy, is it? We're just going to use some regular glue, my friends. Get a little bit of glue on there. Oh. <laughs> Let's get back on there. We're going to put an eye there. And we're going to put another eye right up here. Just like that. Now your insect could also have wings. And if it does have wings, those are going to go on to the thorax. Doesn't this kind of look like it could be a dragonfly? Okay, so now I'm actually going to get a little bit of bigger palm for the thorax. So I'm going to get some glue here. And I'm going to stick that right there for the thorax. Now, if you wanted to make some wings, you could make wings with some tissue paper or some construction paper, or you can use wax paper. You have all sorts of things at your home that you could use to make wings. Okay, so I'm gonna count this as my abdomen. So now we have built a bug. We have, this is the body with the abdomen. We've got the head, the thorax, and one, two, three, four, five, six legs. If you build a bug, you take a picture of it and you send it to me and I'll post it on our Facebook page. I would love to see the bugs that you build. And since it's on a clothespin, you can just clip it right onto anything you want to. Very cool. I forgot on our um, caddis fly here, I always like to put a clothespin on the end of it too so that you can also clip it to things so that you can hang it on something like that. Okay, next, let's move over here to this area. We're gonna do my most favorite insect art project. 
and it is using these guys. So if you were on the first about two or three minutes of our live, you would have seen these guys all wiggling around. Does anybody know what these are? These are maggots. I know you're thinking so gross, maggots are disgusting. But my friends, maggots are very important for our environment. So maggots eat dead, rotting animals and waste like poop, garbage that you throw out. So these animals eat that. Why is that important? Because we need to get rid of that stuff. So would you like to live on a planet that was filled with dead animals and poop? Mm, I would not like that. So somebody has to clean that up. And it's animals like these maggots that clean that up. So what do maggots turn into? You notice that they are a larva right now. Maggots are a larva. So they go through a complete metamorphosis. Egg, larva, pupa, adult, just like a butterfly. So right now they are a larva. And then if you see these little red, this one's kind of orange because it's just turning. Let me get this one here that's fully turned. Okay, so these are the pupa. So egg, larva, pupa, adult. So this one is just starting to turn into a pupa. And this one has been a pupa for a little while. And when it's done changing inside of this cocoon, it's gonna be a fly. It's a green bottle fly. So if you see those green shiny flies, that's what these maggots turn into. So we are going to make a maggot masterpiece. And to do that, I've got a cup here and I've got some paint. So this is just washable paint. I've got two different kinds here. So it's tempera paint that is washable. See, soap and water clean up, just like that. Okay, so I'm gonna paint a maggot masterpiece. So what I have here is just a bucket and I've taken, this is construction paper and I just cut it in half. So we do a lot of these. So we just take a cup, a, a piece of construction paper, we cut it right in half and you can actually fit two of these in a wash tub bucket like this. So then I'm gonna use some paint and I think I'm gonna use purple and I'm just gonna put a couple drips of paint into my little portion cup. Then I'm going to add the maggots. Now I should mention that these maggots were not raised in dead animals or poop. These maggots are raised in cornmeal, so they are clean. So I'm just gonna dump those maggots right into my cup. Look at that. Now, guess what's gonna happen? They're gonna get all covered in paint. We're gonna add a drip right to the top and we can just watch them wiggle around. You see how they're getting all covered in paint? Now, you also might be thinking, isn't that going to hurt the maggots? Well, think about where they live, my friends. They live in dead animals and poop. It's slimy in a dead animal. <clears throat> so these guys are gonna be just fine. And after they're done painting, we will give them a shower and wash off all that paint. And then we keep them in the refrigerator. When you keep insects in the refrigerator like these guys, it slows down their metamorphosis or the change they grow, go through as they grow. So we keep these in the refrigerator and they can last in there for a very long time. So you see how they're getting all wiggly and all covered with paint? Now, if you want to do this at home, you can order maggots online shipped right to your door 
from a fish bait supply store called Speedy Worm. And when I, after I post this video, I will put the link to get maggots yourself. You can also order uh, mealworms from Speedy Worm and night crawlers and anything that you might want to use for fish bait. And it will be shipped right to your house. Okay, so I'm going to give my maggots a little stir here. And then I think they're all ready to paint. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dump the cup. Ready? Just like that. And now the fun begins. I mean, we've been having fun this entire time, right? Yes. So we're gonna watch them paint. Can you see how they just wiggle around? I think we need to get in closer. What do you think? Let's bring our camera down here. Check that out. Look at this guy, he's going, he's going. Now they are just going to wiggle all around and they are making us a maggot masterpiece as we speak. Now where do you think they're going? Let's watch these two over here. Where are they going to go? Let's see, where are they going to go? <gasps> Look at this one. Where's this one? Where are these ones going? Well, that guy's going over, over, way over there. But look, where's this one going? He's going under the paper. Now he's going under the paper because it's dark in there. And so they like to be in dark places. So that's why they're gonna go under the paper because there's no light there. And you can see that as they wiggle around, they are leaving trails of paint. Isn't that cool? So what are we using as our paintbrush right now? What is our paintbrush? The maggots are our paintbrushes. So you can paint with lots of things that you find in nature. You can paint with leaves. You can paint with apples or fruits or nuts or rocks. You can paint with all sorts of things. And right now we are painting with maggots. Let's get them out. Making us a maggot masterpiece. Look at them wiggling around. Now, if you think maggots are super gross and you don't want to paint with them, don't worry. We're going to paint with something else. Can you guess what the next one is going to be? Check out those guys. Aren't they super cool? I think they're really cool. Okay, should we check out our maggot masterpiece? I think we're gonna do it. Okay, so I'm gonna, oops, sorry, that was my finger. Okay, so you can let them paint for as long as you want them to paint. And when you think they're done, then all you have to do is get them off your paper. And to do that, we're gonna just tap them just like that. And then anything that's stuck on there, we can just flick right off, just like that. Whoa, check out that maggot masterpiece. 
Isn't that fabulous? Check out that Maggot Masterpiece. It is perfect for framing or hanging on your refrigerator. You can see all the little trails from the maggots. And I love these ones that are like scattered like there. They look like little dots. Isn't that so cool? It's super cool. Okay, so now we're going to do another art. This Get a new bucket here. Okay, so this next art piece is Leonardo Di Rocci paintings. And I'd like to introduce you to your paintbrushes. These are Madagascar hissing cockroaches. So these cockroaches come from Madagascar where they are decomposers. Very important for our environment. And today they are going to be our little Leonardo da Rocci artist. If you don't have cockroaches, that's okay. You can go outside and you can find beetles or grubs or any type of an insect that you want to use to paint with. So we're gonna use same thing. I've got a bucket here and then I've got some paper and it's just a half slice of construction paper. And now this is gonna be a little bit different because instead of just putting the cockroaches in a cup like we did with the maggots, we are going to, let's use some green, how about that? We're gonna take our paint, same type of paint, washable, water-based paint, and we're gonna put some, we're just gonna drop some paint onto the paper. So you get to help do the art with these guys because wherever you drop the paint is where they're gonna paint with. Put a little bit of white on there. Okay, so if you have a pet hissing cockroach and you want to do this, you totally can. Just make sure to wash your cockroach after you do it. So here's one of our artists and I'm just gonna set him down in there. He's kind of like, oh, what is this? <laughs> Look at him, he's like, what is this stuff? So you can see how, look at their little feet print. Isn't that so cute? You can see how whenever they start walking through it, it care, it moves on their body or the paint gets on their body and then they walk through it. Let's see if we can do it this one. So you can do this with your cockroach or the bug that you find outside as many times as you want to. You might be asking, how do I give my cockroach a shower? Well, you wanna use cool water, but not cold, but not hot. So kind of like lukewarm water. And you don't need any soap. You just wanna um, hold your cockroach under the water when a low, like a little bit of water is running out. And you just rub it with your fingers. Just rub it. Turn him over, rub, 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 and wash that paint off of him. Let's do it again. Now, you may have seen places like the Omaha Henry Dorley Zoo. You can actually buy artwork, that painting that is made by their animals there. Um, at the Insect Zoo, we don't have a gift shop, so we just let you make your own. Look at those little feet print. All right, so I think that they are done painting. We're gonna put them back over here in this cup. 
and oh, my hands are so messy. This is why it's important to make sure that you ask your parents if you can paint. There is our Leonardo da Rocci painting. Now, my friends, if you paint with insects, I want to see your painting. And I want to know what kind of insect you used to paint with. So you can just take a picture of it and send it to me and let me know uh, what you did, what insect you used to paint with. Okay, so that is our Leonardo da Rocci paintings. I wanna try something real quick. So here we've got a piece of paper and I've got my friend, come here friend, the giant stag beetle. Now you see these big pinchers here, what does he do with those? He pinches. So I've got a, a marker and we're going to see if he wants to draw a picture. I'm gonna use this little pipe cleaner so that he can hang on to it better. Now, this guy doesn't really pinch that much, so I tried it this morning and he did a little bit. So I do have that artwork if he decides not to um, pinch for me, but we're gonna see. Come on. Oh, he did. Well, let's see what he wants to draw. Let's get that dirt off of there. Oh, we let go. Let's see. Come in. Come in. There you go. Let's see what he wants to do. <laughs> He's. That's kind of heavy. Let's see. Go ahead. Nope. <laughs> He's so funny. <laughs> Let's see. There is. No, you want to draw? Look, he's doing it. Check him out. Let's see. Let's see what he wants. I gotta get him to move. He's like, I don't want to move. <laughs> oh, this is so fun. What are you gonna do, buddy? <laughs> you gonna do something? <laughs> He's just like, human, I do not know what you are doing to me right now. <laughs> oh my goodness. What do you think, buddy? Try to get him to walk. He doesn't really wanna walk. <laughs> oh boy. The things that scientists do for fun. Oh, there he goes. He got that good. <laughs> he this thing is in the way. That's not even doing anything. Oh, there you go. Let's see. Okay, are you done? <laughs> That's great. Let's check out his artwork here. There is his artwork. Dag beetle. <laughs> Check that out. Isn't that great? Oh, it's fantastic. <laughs> All right, my friends. Let me turn this around here. Okay, guess what? That was a short live. But now it's your job to go and make some art with insects or about insects. So build a bug, or you can find some insects to paint with. My cockroaches are escaping. I did not put the lid on that container. <laughs> Welcome to my office. <laughs> so um, I challenge you to go outside and to find things that you can build a bug with. Or 
find a bug that you can paint with and take a picture of that and then send it to me and I can post it on our Facebook page. Um, tomorrow is Tuesday. The, what's the date tomorrow? The 7th. And we are having a very special Facebook Live. So we are going to bug hunt in your own backyard. So you can join me and my family as we bug hunt in our backyard. And we're going to talk about what you need for bug hunting. What type of gear do you need? Also safety when bug hunting. And some plants that you need to avoid while you are bug hunting. And then we're going to go out into my backyard and we're going to look for bugs. So it's going to be super fun. And then after you're dug but dug after you're done bug hunting with us, I want you guys to go out into your own backyards and look for bugs. Then take a picture and send it to me and I'm going to pick one person to win an insect zoo t-shirt, which is super cool. Now today we were going to also do cockroach races, uh, but I wasn't fully prepared for that. So I think we're going to do that on Friday. We're going to do insect, uh, we're going to do cockroach races and we're going to do cockroach pulls, which we're going to see how fast could you run if you could run as fast as a cockroach and how much could you pull if you were as strong as a cockroach. So my friends, that is everything that we have today. Thank you so much for joining us. Make sure you come and see us tomorrow at 2 o'clock for our live bug hunt with my family. So thank you so much for joining. Go forth and love the bugs.